So actually, the main philosophy of the most boundary method is uh, no uh, distinct uh, separation in between uh, based on any sort of interfacial surface or uh, boundary in between inner and outer domain. So based on one uniform Cartesian domain, uh, there is a Lagrangian and Eulerian interaction in between uh, fluid and structure. So uh, in this talk, I uh, consider more focused on uh, the functionality of solute in between uh, fluid and structure interaction. So that means uh, in whole story, the extension from traditional uh, fluid domain up to concentration domain, and also from traditional electrodiffusion problem up to uh, advection, included electrodiffusion, and also from traditional electrodiffusion up to uh, osmotic effect with water permeability in the structure. So the main context of the application and the present uh, proposed mathematical and computational framework uh, is with uh, mostly biological problems. For example, uh, in neuroscience and in the transmission of neural information, uh, the synapse and dendrite and axon is very important compartments. And at the compartment of uh, dendrite, uh, basically related to learning and memory mechanism, dendritic spine is uh, uh, actually dynamically uh, moving. So that is called the dendritic spine motility. And the main signaling is through calcium ions. The second important, possibly important problem could be uh, in uh, heart pumping mechanism at the domain of the cellular system. Uh, the, uh, the heart cell called cardiac myocyte is actually uh, has uh, excitation contraction coupling uh, mechanism. So uh, based on excitation through electrical signals, there comes mechanical contraction and there are actually solute or ions are actually mediating in between. Also, uh, in, uh, in neural system, uh, information output is through axon, and actually in developmental mechanisms, based on chemical curing, chemical cues uh, as uh, um, driving force of uh, axon guidance, actually the present framework could be considered for application. Also, cell spreading and cell migration is another kind of example we could consider. So, uh, this example is more focused on dendritic spine motility. So, uh, this figure, the first figure is actually more uh, zoomed out, uh, big figure with this uh, neural cell body, and actually those are uh, dendritic branches getting information from axon, and those red-colored domains are actually uh, with uh, some sort of uh, body-sustaining skeleton called uh, akin. Uh, this figure is already more magnified with uh, dendrites and uh, dendritic spine, so the uh, the the last figure is actually with uh, calcium influx and uh, some sort of a buffering effect and uh, interacting with uh, actin and uh, internal calcium store called uh, endoplasmic reticulum. So the, the lower uh, moving uh, movie is actually with very complex uh, signals, including calcium ion, uh, there comes uh, actually uh, in millisecond scale motility and movement of uh, dendritic spine. The other 
more focused example is uh, excitation contraction coupling. Uh, so this is a co called uh, one uh, part of cardiac myocyte. And the ini uh, initiation of contraction begins from influx of calcium ions through ion channels. And there comes uh, positive feedback of calcium release through this internal calcium store. And based on those calcium influx and magnification of calcium, more, more release of calcium ion through uh, internal store, there comes contraction of myofilaments. Uh, that is actually a mechanical movement. And then one whole cycle is terminated with the pumping mechanism. So the uh, incoming calcium ions are pumped out for one cycle and restoration. So electrical signals initiate calcium ion influx, and there comes uh, following uh, mechanical excitation and con con uh, contraction, and then comes uh, relaxation as one cycle for more emer uh, emerging uh, heart pumping phenomena. So actually, uh, those two examples could be uh, very uh, uh, relevant examples for the consideri consideration of uh, solute or electrically charged ion uh, for the mediator in between uh, fluid and structure interaction. So from now on, we will focus on more in mathematical formulation and then uh, and then focused on uh, numerical discretization for solving those problems. So basically, main variables could be staying on this Eulerian coordinate. So for example, uh, fluid velocity and pressure and solute and ionic concentration and chemical potential and electrical potential, all of them are defined on uh, Eulerian coordinate. And actually, this Lagrangian coordinate is for the structural description. So in this story, uh, membrane uh, uh, position. So this Lagrangian and Eulerian domain is interacting together. So in the whole story, if I could say something new in this story that comes basically from this uh, chemical potential. So why is this chemical potential? That is actually from the existence of uh, membrane. So it's not exactly the same as membrane, but because of the existence of membrane, there comes actual physical barrier in between uh, uh, inner and outer domain. So uh, the, those ions or solutes inside has difficulty while get transported to uh, outer domain. So actually that kind of barrier is actually uh, realized and modeled through this chemical potential along uh, the structure of membrane. So when chemical potential is high enough, that means membrane is mostly impermeable to some specified ion or solute. So uh, for example, this green colored initial distribution profile is mostly preserved uh, in long run up to steady state. And this uh, red colored distribution is actually uh, the distribution of chemical potential. When the chemical potential gets uh, decreased, actually there comes uh, diffusion. So there comes transport from uh, inside to outside. And when there is no chemical potential, actually uh, there comes in long run uh, equilibrium. So flat distribution 
in between inside and outside. So uh, when I mention or define the chemical potential as immersed chemical potential, actually that it is defined through this chemical potential kernel, which is actually uh, much dependent on the uh, essence of uh, or the characteristics of barrier. So uh, this chemical potential kernel can be in several ways uh, defined. But uh, in, in my approach, basically, there is following uh, compact support-based support uh, smooth direct delta function. And actually, membrane permeability to each specified ions or solute is regulated through this uh, chemical potential amplitude. So when this is high enough, then that means the membrane is mostly impermeable to the specified IF, uh, ion or uh, solute. And when it gets low and low up to zero, then membrane is mostly gets permeable to uh, the specified ion or solute. And also, in whole story, electrical effect and electrical potential is another important uh, part. So, actually, we, uh, in the in the following stories, we can con we can make a difference in between pure diffusion and electro diffusion. So, electro diffusion comes out from the existence of electrical potential based on uh, electrically charged ions. So this right side hand is actually coming from, uh, this term is actually called uh, electrical uh, charge density as a whole. And this is actually dielectric constant. So this is actually basically uh, Poisson equation and so one important uh, property we need to satisfy in any way is that uh, when we consider uh, a periodic, con periodic boundary uh, condition, for example, then actually for the existence of the solution of the Poisson equation, this global uh, Electro neutrality should be satisfied in mathematical sense. On the other hand, in actual biophysical phenomena, there comes pointwise, in other words, a local electro neutrality that is also satisfied except for uh, sp space charge layer. So that means actually uh, polarized double layer, so a positively and negatively charged dipole structure is there around membrane. So uh, in, in the proposed immersed boundary, immersed boundary or uh, immersed chemical potential approach, one important property is that uh, in comparison to traditional approach, this pointwise local electron neutrality is satisfied as a consequence. So there is no a priori imposition each emerging property, so numerical approach gets more simple. So in this figure, actually, based on the existence of the membrane and immersed chemical potential, there, come, there come, comes positively and negatively charged uh, space charge layer. So actually, uh, these Stokes equations are one important governing equation and, it also, and basically in uh, several domain, mainly the Reynolds number is not that high enough. So uh, actually in low Reynolds number, uh, I just consider the Stokes equations with this uh, incompressibility condition and there comes this Lagrangian uh, 
derivative is actually exactly the same as uh, fluid, fluid velocity from no slip condition. When we consider the water permeability at the structure, there comes uh, actually relative slip sliding mechanism in between fluid and structure. In that case, there, uh, this condition should be modified in some way. So actually, here the main issue will be how to understand this uh, Eulerian force from membrane to fluid, and this body force from I the existence of electrochemical potential. So basically, from the um, internally stored energy in membrane, we could consider the elastic force generated from the membrane. So this generated electric, uh, elas elastic force is exactly transmitted up to fluid and solute. So this Eulerian uh, force from membrane to fluid is actually had some interaction with Lagrangian force from uh, membrane to fluid. That is actually, if could be expli explicitly expressed from the uh, generated elastic force from membrane and the fo Lagrangian force transmitted directly from membrane to solute. The interaction in between Eulerian force and Lagrangian force is actually have com conversation through this uh, de delta function with integration uh, in Eulerian, uh, in Lagrangian domain. So the second term of this uh, body force is actually composed of electrical and chemical Eulerian force that is actually directly expressed through this body force acting per ion. So there should be multiplication to uh, concentration to specify the ion and summation up to whole uh, species of ion. And this is actually, th this part is actually the chemical force acting on one ion or solute and actually also multiplied by concentration of the specified uh, solute. So here actually after some uh, simplification this force should be in any way expressed in explicit way, and that is actually uh, the Lagrangian force generated in membrane minus this Lagrangian force transmitted from membrane to a uh, solute. So the direct question would be how we could express this term uh, in explicit way. So that is actually based on uh, momentum conservation, that means in a given arbitrary Eulerian domain, total force transmitted from solute, solute uh, structure to solute is exactly the same as uh, total chemical force on fluid. So that means this Lagrangian force transmitted from membrane to solute. Here actually this Lagrangian domain is actually uh, included in a given arbitrary Eulerian domain of omega is e exactly the same as this by force of chemical uh, force integrated on this that given uh, Eulerian domain of omega. So on, 
based on this conservation of, of momentum principle, this force is actually uh, in a previous slide uh, expressed in explicit way. So based on, based on this, this equation, uh, that relationship should be satisfied for arbitrary Eulerian uh, domain. So actually, there comes this uh, explicit expression of Lagrangian force transmitted from membrane to solute in a direct way. So actually, this is expressed in explicit way. This is also known uh, in explicit way. So as a whole, this Eulerian force from membrane to fluid is also expressed in explicit way. So the, uh, the other counterpart, very important in our whole story, is this advection electro diffusion. Uh, and actually, in these micro scales, for example, diffusion, coefficient, Boltzmann constant, and temperature, all of them get more important. So here, uh, the main important term could be the flux term from the pure diffusion. So this, the first term is actually uh, from the pure diffusion. And the second term is actually uh, the drift term from the existence of uh, electrical potential. So for example, this is actually uh, the electrical force. And based on uh, Einstein relation formula, with this acting force per ion, actually this drift, drift coefficient has this relationship in between diffusion coefficient and uh, this KBT constant. So this is actually a veloci drift velocity term that is actually mo uh, multiplied by concentration. In the same way, this term is actually drift uh, flux term coming from the existence of chemical potential. The last term is actually a direction term from the fluid flow. So based on those four terms, based on uh, conservation law, actually this, the dynamics of concentration of each species of ion or solute, there actually this flux term is expressed through this pure diffusion and drift term from electrochemical potential and also from the fluid flow from the Stokes equations. So from now on, we will consider more on numerical schemes of implicit. Here, actually, it's not pure uh, and fully implicit scheme, but semi-implicit scheme. And secondly, uh, on uh, local mesh refinement. So uh, I just briefly uh, explain about the discretization on space and time. Uh, this discretization, yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So, yeah, exactly. So, uh, Charles Peskin has mostly focused on only this equation. So there, uh, for example, the functionality of concentration or solute or ions has not considered. Okay? And what I have done is actually another consideration of the continuity equation of advection electrical diffusion equation. And there, Actually, this force itself should be modified 
for example, because of the existence of concentration, this uh, Eulerian force from membrane to fluid is not no more the same as uh, the uh, mechanically generated force from membrane. So this term should be also considered one, as one example. Yep. And so here, there comes one difference in between pure Stokes equation based uh, immersed boundary constellation and actually uh, fluid structure interaction problem extended up to advection electrode diffusion. Actually, that is actually based on this equation. So actually, those fluid variable is actually coupled, for example, explicitly here with uh, advection term. Also, the Stokes equation itself is coupled with advection electrode diffusion based on this concentration term. So it's not independent equations, but closely coupled together in between. There could be mono, monolithic uh, approach sizing as a whole, but in, a, in my approach, uh, actually that are separately solved, but in equations itself, they are communicating each other very closely. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, then actually it would be better to show you some sort of simulation results and then get back to the more numerical approach. Okay, then actually. Yeah, actually, that uh, that is in the application uh, story. So this, the general framework of uh, the immersed boundary method with elevation electrode diffusion can be possibly applied to both of uh, the problem in uh, neuroscience and uh, learning and memory mechanism, and also in in heart pumping mechanism. Yes, actually, this is actually, uh, as you know well, uh, osmotic phenomena. So there, this is actually the green colored profile is actually initial concentration of some solute. So it's high in extracellular domain and low in intracellular domain. So when we consider some sort of water permeability based on Darcy's law, then actually water, water is transported from inside to outside. And there comes from the initial uh, structure of red colored one to a blue colored uh, structure. So there comes shrinkage phenomena. So actually, when we do not consider the effect of this solute concentration, we cannot consider, we cannot explain the phenomena of this osmotic effect. So based on pure fluid structure interaction problem, we cannot model and simulate or understand that kind of phenomena. And actually here, actually, with, the, with some sort of contractive uh, elect uh, elastic force on the membrane, 
even though there is this non-uniform concentra concentration distribution, there comes some sort of mechanical equilibrium and osmotic equilibrium in between uh, elastic force and osmotic pressure. And thirdly, in this case, we consider the uh, non non contractive elastic force on the membrane, and actually we consider rather than just one third uh, positively and negatively charged two species of ion of calcium and chloride. So in this case, actually initially non uniform and high inside and low in outside, there should be this swelling phenomena uh, with osmotic effect. It, so actually, this locally uh, concentrated distribution comes out from the space charge layer. I could explain in detail more later. Anyway, in this case, actually, uh, there comes swelling phenomena from the water transport from outside to inside. So in this case also, fluid solute structure interaction is very important for the, on the, our understanding of this osmotic effect phenomena. So this is one example. Concentration makes this kind of the move about the uh, where's the electric charge. Uh, electric charge. Charge, okay, okay. How the electric charge makes the, this phenomenon? So actually, electrical charge density has that kind of structure. So actually, even on the way of the movement, actually they kind of positively and negatively charged iron actually are mostly preserved. So di dipole polarized structure uh, is observed in the whole uh, membrane movement. And actually, each actually in magnitude the same in between inside and outside. So in net force, actually, there should be no effect as a whole. But actually, uh, when there are uh, in electrokinetic phenomena, actually, because of the existence of that kind of positively and negatively charged ion uh, net, net uh, electrical charge density structure, uh, there comes very uh, interesting phenomena. Yeah. So when we consider active uh, externally applied electric field, for example, we can derive some sort of fluid, f fluid flow, fluid structure based on electrokinetic uh, mechanism. And there, this Davy layer and space charge layer has very important functionality. But in, the, in, in this ordinary effect, uh, it's not that, yeah, dominant. Is there any question? Okay, then let's get back to the uh, numerical uh, schemes. So uh, here, 
across the discretization of uh, the continual equation. So actually, uh, it's following basically backward Euler equation. And the one step forward a flux term is computed from this one step forward uh, diffusion term. And here, the drift term is a little bit uh, needs cautious, judicious treatment. So this net drift velocity is from the uh, at time of n. So it's not, it's not from one step forward in the, uh, velocity. But actually, this concent concentration itself is based on one step forward in one. So uh, actually, in the whole story, across membrane, there comes this continuous distribution in concentration and also a singular structure in chemical potential distribution and also uh, very abruptly changing electro, uh, electrical uh, potential distribution. So in those structures of shock type, uh, the numerical treatment should be very careful. So in finite element approach, for example, uh, Galapin list square method or uh, of in the streamlined uh, petrov galakin method, that kind of stuff could be considered. In this finite difference method, uh, we could consider of based Ovind method. So here, in this net velocity, actually drift velocity is actually considered as a whole, considering all of fluid velocity and drift velocity from uh, electrical potential and also, here actually, I'm, I'm sorry, Q uh, is missed. And also here, uh, chemical, the drift velocity from chemical potential. So based on the direction of net effective uh, drift velocity, actually the discretization at the cell edge is uh, Taylor uh, interpolated based on uh, actually original point, cell centered point of I comma J, or uh, the uh, left uh, sided uh, or right sided uh, point. So actually, uh, I missed it. Actually, this whole numerical scheme is based on cell centered domain. So those cell centered points are mainly defined. And when we consider the backward Euler based scheme uh, with second order uh, of wind approach, actually there comes this kind of non-compact nine point stencil structure. So uh, this linear operator is actually dependent on both of fluid velocity at time of n and also uh, electrochemical potential at time of n. So this equation, mostly this linear operator is changing uh, as time variant operator. And this equation is actually solved through uh, iterative uh, solver of gemless as main solver and also as a very multi-grid solver as preconditional. Basically, this approach is the same, even in the case of uh, locally me mesh refined uh, hierarchy. And also, the main reason for the usage of a semi-implicit scheme is to overcome a very strictly imposed uh, time step size in the case of explicit, explicitly 
uh, discretized uh, approach. So in our approach, based on uh, the semi-implicitly linearly uh, discretized approach, from the case of uh, 10 to the minus 8 second for uh, purely explicit approach, uh, it gets high and large enough up to 10 to the minus 5. So actually, that means computationally more efficient, even, even though there should be some compromise. That means when dt is high enough, then the actual accuracy issue comes out. So there should be some compromise in between, not to small time step, uh, but, but also to large time step. So in between, we need to consider uh, the time step in a relevant way for the stability issue. But anyway, from this semi-implicit approach, uh, we could slightly overcome the very uh, strictly imposed uh, time step condition based on Schaeffer. So the communication in between Lagrangian and Eulerian domain comes out from the spreading operator from Lagrangian domain to Eulerian domain. So in our story, for example, Lagrangian first term can be transmitted and spread out onto Eulerian domain. And also, based on this interpolation operator, the velocity, Eulerian velocity vector field can be lifted up to onto uh, Lagrangian domain based on this uh, interpolation uh, construction. And that is actually, so, Spreading and interpolation operator uh, has relationship of adjoint uh, structure that can be easily shown through the uh, acting power relationship in between Lagrangian domain and Eulerian domain. So this discretization on external force is, is very straightforward. And here I consider more on this semi-implicit scheme of the Stokes equation. So here the main issue could be the satisfaction of the incompressibility condition. So actually in the first equation, in our approach, there is no satisfaction of incompressibility condition. So it's not still diverg divergence-free in U tilde term. And here, this pressure is actually used uh, as a uh, known variable at time of n minus 1 half. And the crack Nicholson approach is uh, considered. And here, the stiffness of the force is mainly coming out from the elastic force. So implicit approach is only done for this uh, the Lagrangian force from membrane to fluid, but this body force is actually explicitly uh, is <laughs> treated. And then, based on this projection operator, there comes the satisfaction of divergence-free condition. So, f traditionally, uh, actually, and in a direct way, we could consider exact uh, projection operator, but in our story, we consider uh, approximately projected operator. That is, uh, I, I consider and make it uh, more clear in the following slides. And then, based on this, once the folded velocity field, there comes interpolation on the Lagrangian domain, and then there comes actually vector field matching forward based on this no slip condition. So based on the rearrangement in algebraic structure, actually, I, actually here 
one point is that actually this term actually is approximated in a uh, linear way. So actually, for example, that a linearized operator is coming from this Jacobian term in the uh, elastic first term. So anyway, based on this equation, this is actually a linear algebra equation. And this right-hand side is actually computed from velocity and elastic force on Lagrangian domain, and known uh, pressure term. And then after this uh, membrane uh, step size is actually computed based on, for example, GMS solver. And then once the folded velocity term is actually computed on this relationship based on this computed uh, step size of Lagrangian membrane. Here, actually, that kind of uh, elliptic operators are involved. That is solved through uh, GMS, uh, preconditioned by uh, motivated solvers. So when I say approximate projection method, that means actually in comparison to this exact projection, that is actually based on this, uh, you know, discretized uh, operator. Divergence of gradient, that is not exactly the same as this Laplace operator. But actually, uh, based on this operator, still actually it has the accuracy of a second order. And also it's well fitted with, with uh, lo locally uh, meshed hierarchy structure. And then this pressure term is known at this stage. And actually uh, pressure uh, Update is actually based on this relationship. So, and that relationship is actually can be derived or uh, induced onto this equation. So, actually, based on this relationship, actually, uh, divergence free uh, velocity at time of n plus one, and uh, one step forward uh, pressure term has that kind of relationship. So that Stokes equation is actually divergence free, and that is what we want to have. So basically, this projection approach is actually following the Hodge decomposition theorem. So any smooth vector field can be expressed through uh, divergence, divergence free term plus a gradient of potential. So based on that kind of theorem, exact or approximate projection approach makes it possible for us to take steps in a fractional approach to solve this uh, incompressible Stokes equation. So this is actually the main formula for the first generation from the membrane. And actually, for the remaining time, I focus on local mesh refinement uh, ideas, you know, basic approach. So actually, there should be hierarchical structure, so multi-level and composite grid of structure, and also how to fill out ghost cells. And also, I think. This should be very important part, two, also two and three. So that means uh, the computation of operations. So for example, divergence, gradient, Laplacian operator, and also in advection electrodiffusion, that uh, linear operator, how to compute at the interface domain of coarse fine interfaces, and also uh, how to solve
the first adaptive composite grid method. Those will be shortly covered. So basically, uh, in our approach, based on this uh, structure and also space charge layer, actually, uh, I didn't do uh, a priori error estimation that could be that could be done you know near future anyway here uh, with enough compact support for the uh, refined level actually uh, the ratio in between the ratio of mesh size in between uh, upper level and lower level is two and the filling ghost cell is actually, uh, in the case of uh, elliptic uh, problems and person problems, we just need to fill in just, uh, this is actually a coarse mesh and this is actually fine mesh. So there, we just need to fill in uh, one with uh, ghost cells. In the case of advection electrical diffusion, we need to fill in one more width. So two width of ghost cells should be considered because of non-compact uh, nine-point stencil structure. And that is actually based on linear interpolation in between, for example, for this point, this point, and this point, and this point. So the three points are all coupled together for the uh, interpolation. And in the computation of, for example, self-centered gradient for self-centered variable of P, there should be so, uh, some sort of communication in between fine mesh and coarse mesh. So for example, actually self-centered second of a uh, gradient can be defined so actually, that is computed on edge-centered appro approximation. And then those variables should be communicated with lower pitch and lower levels. That should be done, for example, through the energy, uh, average conservation-based average operator. So for example, this edge-centered approximation should be uh, done onto uh, course level, and then those edge centered approximation should be interpolated onto cell centered variables. So instead, in between one and three, anyway, there should be that kind of uh, conservation based averaging communication and synchronization in between fine level and course level. That it should be very important. I just briefly uh, explain the main idea of the uh, server of first adaptive composite grid method that is briefly called FAC. So in the inverse boundary strokes equations, actually one layer of ghost cells is considered. And at the bottom server, uh, this is actually some sort of geometric multigrid server. And mostly this person equations, for example, in the approximate uh, projection computation and also in a uh, backward Euler-based uh, immersed boundary uh, part is actually solved by this person equations. And in observation electrical diffusion equations, two layers of ghost cells are considered. And in a more uh, efficient way, in a bottom server, actually, in, o in an original approach, we should consider second order of the scheme with a non compact nine point stencil, but that is very more computationally heavy. So I just consider. Uh, f first order of wind scheme in observation electrical diffusion, there is only five point and compact stencil st structure. So this 
continual equation is solved basically uh, for main solver of GMLS. And this FH is solved only for preconditional way. So in that sense, this uh, already low accuracy of the first order of wind scheme doesn't change the whole emerging accuracy of the server of GMS with the same efficiency of iteration for the whole solution. So main server as GMS and FAC as preconditional works well. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Which is, which is a precondition? Final grid? Ah, final actually, grid? okay, Final. okay. So actually, F FH is actually based on multi-grid, locally uh, refined version of multi-grid approach. So actually, uh, actually the preconditioner, you can consider in a more easily sense. Actually, I'm using some sort of multi-grid server for preconditioner. It, does it make sense? So you mean the adaptive means you make cost clean and use that as the multi-level multi technology? Yeah, multi-grid multi server itself has a uh, communication to smooth out errors in between higher and lower levels, okay? Smoothing operator and actually interpolation operator is working together, so actually and multi grid server is very efficient. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. So, so you use the, the language adaptive. So adaptive means we define the mesh. Aha, okay, okay. Here. So you take a coarse grid from the original grid. Yeah, okay. Here, actually, I'd like to make it clear. Here, uh, up to now, I do not use a remeshing procedure. So actually, more accurately, I'm just using locally refined machine, not auditively, auditive mesh refinement. Yep. Yep. So actually, uh, this, uh, this is actually some uh, numerical examples with uh, two ions with a moving boundary. So uh, here, for cation ions, uh, so concentration is high in outside and low in inside. And there are, the membrane is actually slightly permeable to calcium ions. So with the initial elliptic structure and deformation onto this circle, there comes actual leakage from outside to inside. So this is actually X, X section view and this is Y section view. So actually, uh, you p pointed out, in the course of uh, uh, deformation, there is no remeshing procedure. Actually, I have done initial local mesh refinement, and that refined mesh structure is preserved in the whole time matching steps. And this is actually uh, with freely diffusive uh, membrane onto chloride ion. X section and Y section, and uh, two dimensional distribution structure. And also, uh, this, uh, because of the slightly permeable calcium ion, that kind of uh, not dipole structure, but triple uh, polarized structure comes out, but still, this inside and outside are lo uh, locally electron neutral in the course of structure deformation. And also this is a local minima because of the triple uh, polarized structure. Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. This is actually uh, this dotted one is mostly at initial stage, and blue colored one is at time uh, elastic enough. And here actually, uh, actually two dimensional point of view. 
this is the initial and then in the final time. This is actual pressure. Actually, there is subtle oscillation, I think, but still the kind of discontinuous profile is well captured. And this is. Yeah, there's no reason of a symmetric structure. So actually, ah, okay. So actually, uh, with the elastic force term, there, there, actually, in this stage, it's non-equilibrium, and there comes more equilibrium stage of the circular structure, and there, there's also a viscous effect. And actually, as a whole, uh, it's first order accurate, and that is mostly uh, observed in the very stiff elastic uh, structure cases. So actually, for the remaining, so actually, I think it's a little bit over time, but can I have five minutes more? Yeah, five minutes. Yep. So uh, in the examples of application, the osmosis is already covered. So I focus on this voltage current relationship and concentration dependent contraction. It's a simple prototype of excitation contraction coupling <laughs> in cardiac myocyte. So actually this voltage current relationship is very important in the ionic channel consideration. Okay? So current, transmembrane current is dependent on voltage. So here actually one important concept in the biology is actually ion selectivity. That means for some ion channels, actually, for example, calcium ion channels only transport calcium ions and not another ion ions. So, for example, in this case, membrane is uh, permeable to calcium ion and mostly impermeable to chloride ion. So, here actually, with applied electric uh, field, there comes the total current is mostly the same as the current of calcium ion. That means the transmembrane current of chloride ion is mostly negligible based on uh, ion selective structure, based on ion specified chemical potential application. And there comes the kind of uh, nonlinear structure in between transmembrane voltage and current. And here actually we could consider in the case of a steady state of no current so actually, that is called a resting potential. So in that point, for example, in our biophysical relevance of our modeling, we, could, we should test this neuron state equation. That means for the permeable ion of calcium ion, in the steady state of no current point, the thermodynamic relationship of neuron state equation should be satisfied. So that means Electrochemical energy in arbitrary uh, inside should be the same as outside. So that is exactly saying this relationship in between electrical potential difference and actually uh, this uh, concentration ratio. So in our case, the kind of computed uh, electrical potential difference is mostly the same as this uh, uh, chemical energy difference. Okay, so let's jump up to concentration dependent uh, contraction problem. So in this case, the stiffness Stiffness uh, coefficient that is uh, relating the actual uh, 
elasticity property that is actually dependent on this uh, concentration. So that means uh, the, the inside, for example, uh -huh. so here actually this construction is basically based on activated uh, ectomyosin fibers inside the cardiac myocyte. That is actually has the kind of uh, heel, heel type curve uh, property. So uh, actually in this domain, there is some sort of linear uh, increment of stiffness depending on log of calcium concentration. And also in resting length curve, there could be that kind of uh, decreasing relationship of heel type. So actually, with this in, uh, high concentration in inside, and also here, calcium ion is mostly impermeable, and chloride ion, the other counterpart of chloride ion, is mostly permeable. So those fibers are actually some simplified uh, expression of ectomyosin fi fibers uh, responding to high concentration of uh, calcium ion. And actually, the kind of uh, contraction of fibers. And, uh, and to, uh, following those deformation of boundary of membrane, there is the actual uh, conservation law of calcium and chloride ions. And actually here, one important aspect of electrodiffusion is even though there is no chemical barrier, it's not uh, fully uh, flat. So it doesn't get fully flat. That means with the emerging space charge layer and emerging electro, uh, electrical potential structure, there comes electric effect to retain the inside uh, chloride ions. Still, so pure diffusion is exactly different from electro diffusion, where electrical potential and space charge layer has very important functionality. And this is actually dipole structure, emerging dipole structure of electrical charge density. So, in summary, uh, in computational sense, uh, mediated by ions or solutes, Stokes equations are very closely coupled together with advection electrical diffusion, extending from traditional Freud structure interaction to Freud solute structure interaction problem. And time stepping restriction in explicit schemes is uh, relaxed with semi-implicit schemes. And local mesh refinement is coupled with approximate projection method for the uh, incompressible Stokes equation. And Jimmy's Iterative salvo is preconditioned by FAC uh, salvo works well in Poisson and advection electrical diffusion equations. And the overall accuracy is around first order. And in physiological sense, actually, electron neutrality except for space charge layer is fully satisfied in the course of membrane advection. And it is a consequent uh, satisfaction and not a priori imposition. And also in steady state, energy uh, equilibrium of the neural equation is well satisfied. And the nonlinear structure and important uh, relationship in ion channel gating mechanism uh, of voltage current relationship is uh, obtained for each uh, species of ion and concentration dependent uh, mechanism as example osmosis and concentration dependent construction are shown as some uh, applications so in a future work uh, actually we could consider the extension from 2d architecture to 3d and application of parallel computing and more complicated simulation of calcium-induced calcium release, 
both commonly existing in a dendritic spine uh, motility mechanism and also uh, excitation contraction coupling in cardiac myocyte. So I'd like to thank you to my PhD advisor, Charles Pesky, and also uh, in uh, local mesh refinement approach, I've got much uh, help from Boyce e. Griffiths. He's in, right now, you know, audit, assistant professor in New York University, and also many people around the current. Thank you very much. <laughs>